I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain that this new nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The symbols of America and its people assume many forms. Memorials of our great leaders, the flag, the nation's capital. They recall people, events, places in our history that give meaning to our concepts of liberty and justice. Probably the best-known symbol of America to the outside world is the magnificent Statue of Liberty at the entrance to the New World. Watching over New York Harbor since 1886, the Statue of Liberty is a symbol of freedom that welcomed millions of immigrants to America. The Statue of Liberty American as she is, was actually created by a Frenchman and was given to America by the French people. The conception and construction of Liberty Miss was the result of the determination of a small group of Frenchmen and the vision of sculptor August Bertholdi. In 1874, Bartholdi came to America to discuss the monument with President Grant. As he sailed into New York Harbor, he envisioned Liberty Miss as a colossal goddess standing at the gateway to the New World. After Bartholdi returned to France, he began work on small models of the statue. From a four-foot clay model, he enlarged it in two stages to one-quarter the planned size. In the large model, 36 feet high, the design finally perfected was marked off into three parts to be made larger by mathematical calculations. Bartholdi completed the arm holding the torch in time for the 100th anniversary of American independence. It was displayed at the Philadelphia Centennial Celebration, and nearly a million Americans came to admire it. Many climbed to the torch to see the index finger that was taller than a man. In Paris, Bartholdi began work on Miss Liberty's head. When it was displayed at the Paris World's Fair in 1878, people climbed the interior stairs for a look through the struts of Miss Liberty's gigantic crown. At his Paris studio, Bartholdi began work on the rest of the figure, using lath and plaster to form the contours. Gustav Eiffel who later designed the famous Eiffel Tower, built the supporting iron framework for the skeleton. Mm. 
no studio could house the enormous 151-foot statue. So it was set up in the courtyard, and soon Liberty Miss was towering over the Paris rooftops. For the trip to New York, the statue was dismantled, packed into 214 huge crates, and loaded aboard the French ship Isère. The statue could not be assembled until Joseph Pulitzer used his newspaper to raise the remaining $280,000 needed to complete the base. She arrived in New York Harbor in May of 1885, and the unloading began on Bedloe's Island. New Yorkers watched the 125-ton iron skeleton take shape. The copper shell sections were bolted to the central framework. It took 300,000 copper rivets to complete the statue. And when finished, Liberty Miss towered over 300 feet above the bay. On a cold, rainy day, October 28, 1886, President Grover Cleveland presided over the dedication ceremony, and Bartholdi's dream had become a reality. Liberty Miss, who began as a symbol of friendship between two nations, was to welcome millions of immigrants who eagerly flooded America's shores in search of the political, religious, and economic freedom they could not find in their native lands. Drawn by the light of Liberty's lamp, these were the people who shaped the nation. For the vast majority of all Americans are immigrants or descendants of immigrants. Bartholdi's colossal statue, the largest the world has yet known, portrays Liberty in the figure of a woman who has just won her freedom. In her right hand, she holds a burning torch and in her left hand, a book of law inscribed with the date of the Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. And in 1903, a year in which the immigration movement was approaching its full tide, a bronze plaque was added, which permanently linked the enormous monument and the massive flow of immigrants which landed at nearby Ellis Island. The plaque carried a poem by Emma Lazarus, entitled, The New Colossus. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send those, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door.